In a recent video, I made this, I guess you could call it a quick lock handle for my tool post. It allows me to quickly adjust and tighten my tool post without having to reach for a wrench. If you're interested in seeing how this was made, I will leave a link to that video somewhere up at the top of this one. I have been very happy with how this thing came out. It works really well. It's super easy to use. If I want to change my tool position, I just change it and it's as fast and easy as that. So continuing on that theme of sort of reinventing the wheel and I guess customizing absolutely everything that I can think of. And as the next stage of assault in my ongoing war against wrenches, the next thing that I want to tackle is adjusting the height of the tool. So the way that you adjust the height of your tool and then lock it in place is pretty much the same on all of these quick change tool posts, at least as far as I have seen. And the way that it normally works is there's some sort of threaded post in the middle of the tool holder, a knurled knob, and some kind of locking nut. There's usually a washer of some type between the knurled knob and the locking nut. Sometimes it's a wavy spring washer, and sometimes it's just a normal washer like it is here. You can then use the knurled adjusting knob to either raise or lower your tool until you have it in the place where you want it. And once you have your tool set to the correct height, you just cinch down your locking nut, give it a little torque with your wrench so that it doesn't move on you. And at this point, this tool holder should be all set until you either change out the tool or resharpen it if it's high speed steel or brazed carbide. Now, this little system here is fine. It does the job okay, I guess, but in my opinion, it's far from perfect. Um, it does have its issues for one, because everything is threaded. There are occasions where you will go to tighten down the locking nut and you will either also begin to turn your adjusting knob here which will change the height of the tool, or sometimes these two things get stuck together, either coolant or oil gets in there and dries, forming like a glue, and you may go to loosen this nut and the entire post will start unthreading from the tool holder. Some of my tool holders have this little keyway that is supposed to prevent some of those issues. However, not all of my tool holders have this keyway, and even the ones that do, don't all have the correct washer with the corresponding key. So that's kind of a moot point. And of course, the most egregious sin that I can think of is that it requires a wrench. And honestly, we just can't have that. So let's try and do something a little bit better. For this project, I'll be using this one inch piece of 360 free machining brass. I would just like to point out here how easy it is to adjust the tool position so that I can take this facing cut using the new handle. I love it when a plan comes together. After facing the stock, I'll drill for a center. This is going to serve a couple of purposes in the operations coming up next. Ultimately, I need to make a whole bunch of these, one for each tool holder. But for now, I'm just gonna pull out enough stock to make maybe three. Next, I just wanna take a light skim cut on this outside surface, just enough to clean things up. Arguably, a center isn't really needed for this cut, but the center isn't really for this operation. It's for the operation that's gonna come next which is to put a nice knurl on this outside surface. For that, I'm gonna be using this scissor style knurling tool. I very much prefer this style knurling tool over the bump style. The use of a clamping nut directs all of the tool's pressure into the part as a clamping force, as opposed to pushing against the spindle and feed screw of your machine like a bump knurler. After a quick jog of the spindle, just to make sure that everything's looking right, I will just feed through the rest of the knurl. For this, I ran the spindle at 105 RPM and fed at 5 thousandths per revolution.
and after just a bit of a quick cleanup, I have to admit that's not looking too shabby. That is a decent looking neural if I do say so myself. Just a couple of things left to do at the lathe. I of course need to drill and then tap the hole to match the tool post. This is going to be a 3 8 24 thread. So this is a letter Q drill. And because it's brass, I will just use the machine to power through the tapping operation. And finally, a chamfer, because we're civilized people, but also to get rid of the burr raised by the neural, because it is now time to head over to the milling machine, and we're going to need to indicate off of that face. For work holding at the mill, I'll just be using V-blocks. The only important thing to remember here is to leave enough of the work hanging over the vise to give me the access I'll need for the operations I'll be performing. Using a parallel to span that T-slot gives me just enough room to slip in a machinist jack for a little bit of insurance. Before doing any machining, I want to find zero in X and Y and get those entered into my DRO. I am, however, going to make a critical mistake here, which will come back to bite me later. Let me know in the comments if you can guess what it is. The first machining task that I want to perform on the mill is to slit one side of the part straight down the middle. To do that, I'll be using a 60 thousandths slitting saw. The thickness of the slitting saw is kind of arbitrary, it just seemed like a good thickness for the task at hand. To get the cutter set at the correct height, I just touch off on the top of the part and then move down half the diameter of the part and half the thickness of the cutter. This doesn't need to be perfect as long as it's close. And the rest of this operation is pretty straightforward. Just feed in until the cutter breaks into that central threaded bore and then traverse through the rest of the length of the part. I have the volume turned way down here because this brass squeals a lot during this operation. Next, I need to cut recesses for the heads of what are going to be the locking screws. To do that, I'm going to be using this 1964 three flute center cutting end mill. The plan here was supposed to be simple. Using the zeros that I set earlier, I was simply going to move to the correct position in X and then plunge down at the correct position in Y. However, as I started plunging down, I realized that when I zeroed in Y, I'd forgotten to account for the diameter of my edge finder, and so I am 250 thousandths too far out. Fortunately, the error is very easy to spot as it's happening, so I just quickly redo the math and figure out the correct Y coordinate using the numbers that are already in the DRO. So I just cut the other two exactly the same as the first one, and <laughs> you probably wouldn't even know if I hadn't mentioned it. You can see here though that they are much deeper than they need to be. They should just be deep enough to counterbore for the heads of these cap screws, but you can see how deep it sinks down in there. They're about twice as deep as they need to be, and that's because I messed up on that Y coordinate. But no use crying over milled brass. It is now time to get all of these drilled straight through for an 832 tap. The top sections will then just be drilled for clearance around the screw. Once 
Once that's all finished, it's time to tap them for the 832 thread. I'll just be using a hand tap here. It's brass, it's a small thread, and it's easy enough to just hand tap. And that's all the work that needs to be done on the milling machine. It is now time to head back on over to the lathe and get the parts separated from the stock. Getting the parts separated is easy enough. I will of course just be using a parting blade. I'll touch off on the front face of the part, zero my micrometer scale, move the carriage forward the width of the parting blade plus the width of the part. I'm going to turn the lathe down to its lowest speed here, and then I will start the parting operation. However, before I feed all the way through the part, I do want to go back and chamfer those edges, because of course we are civilized people. And with that, we have one, that makes two, and three. Well, here they are, looking pretty nice if I do say so myself. One thing I can say straight off the bat is they are heavy, but in a good way, if you know what I mean. They have like heft. They feel good in the hand. But the real test is, let's see how they work. Okay, so again, for reference, this is the old system, and basically what you have is a jam nut. It's a jam nut system with a washer in the middle. And here, side by side, is the new system. And this is basically a split lock nut with this locking screw. So let's put it on and see how well it works. All right, so of course, if I want to adjust my height, I just put it wherever I need to put it, and then I can nip down my locking nut, and that isn't going anywhere. And then if I need to adjust it, again, just undo the locking nut, loosens right up. Now I can move it wherever I need it, lock it back down, lock my locking nut, and I'm good to go. Yeah, I like it. Also, I think it looks a lot nicer. Now, before you say anything, <laughs> I am fully aware of the irony in the fact that I have traded a wrench for an Allen key. I don't know what to tell you. I like the way that it looks a lot better, and honestly, I think that it works nicer too. You know, this may just be a matter of preference. Maybe this isn't something that everybody wants to do, but personally, I like it, and I think that over time, I probably will make one for just about every tool holder that I have. And I guess that pretty much wraps it up for this one. I hope that you enjoyed the video and the fun little project. I know that it's a small thing, but in my opinion, it's the small things that add up and make a good machine a great machine and just make it more comfortable and more fun to use and that's really what it's all about as usual if you have made it this far into the video thank you so very much i really do appreciate each and every person who watches and when you do things like watch this far into the video like comment it tells the algorithm that you enjoyed the content which means it'll be shared with more people so thank you. If you're already a subscriber, thank you again. And if you haven't subscribed, but you like what I do here and you feel like I've earned it, give me a like and a subscribe. If you feel like I haven't, let me know what I can do better in the comments down below. And as always, until next time, get out there, make something awesome. Most importantly, have some fun, and I hope to see you all again very, very soon.